up, Simon, and welcome back to a new quick win. Today we're building a little audio recorder that was requested by the community. So you speak, I listen, we do it. We're gonna use a very cool capacitor plugin for this, which is really, I, I, I haven't seen a plugin that was easier to use than this one before. We're gonna be able to record audio. We will also add a little functionality with our capacitor file system so we can store those files as we get back base64 strings and then later also easily play those files. And you can already imagine from that point on with a base64 string or a file, you could do anything, upload the file, Firebase, Superbase, your own backend, really, you name it. On top of that, after creating a basic version, we will also implement a little ionic gesture. So you get that effect like in the WhatsApp application where you have to press and hold that button. We will not make this slide up micro interaction because that is really next level. If you really inspect closely what's happening in the WhatsApp uh, application when you slide up, there's something else coming. If you stop it, another animation happens and brings something to the trash. So we're not doing that. If you wanna see that, let me know in the comment and we might do it in a future UI episode. But for now, we're gonna do the audio recorder. If you want to check out the source code, link below the video for all Ionic Academy members. And you know it, if you're not yet a member, go check it out, ionicacademy.com, my online school to help you with everything Ionic. So let's build this audio recorder today in really no time and see how amazing that plugin is. All right, let's get started with the voice recording. So as always, we're gonna start with a blank new Ionic application and we're gonna install the Capacitor Voice Recorder. Uh, this plugin is not yet part of the Capacitor community. Uh, so the name is just Capacitor Voice Recorder. Still, uh, it is pretty cool. The web implementation wasn't available at the time I was uh, creating this quick win. But as I've seen in one of the issues, it will be within uh, an upcoming release. So we can wait for that. But for now, it will definitely work pretty good on iOS and Android. Additionally, for this tutorial, I installed the Capacitor file system and Haptics plugin. Uh, the first simply to store the files and to later play them from our file system and this one to have a nice little well haptic feedback in our application which i can't really show inside the video but anyway i think it is a good idea to use this package more often then go ahead and create your native uh, build because as i said we can only test it on a device so i already got it here on my device with live reload so we can see all the changes if you also want to bring up live reload Simply add the native platforms and then, come on, run Ionic, cap, your platform, dash dash live reload, dash dash external. I always use source map false because, well, it's in the history of my command line and I think it works better for iOS debugging, but that's just, well, just a feeling. Um, to use the plugin, there's only one thing we need to do, and then is go to the info p list of our iOS project. So you can open this from Xcode or from Visual Studio, it doesn't really matter. And then add the NS microphone usage description right here. I'm kind of confused that there's no usage description for Android necessary, but well, we don't need it. Uh, also, we don't need to add it to uh, our native Android project. Actually, kind of uh, unsure how the native implementation looks like. So press, well, there's this, there's the Swift file. Okay, it's just using the AV audio session. Okay, well, it definitely works great. So let's do this. Uh, we're going to begin with something easy, and that is just to load the files and to record some files. So let's add two functions, start recording. And we're gonna keep track if we're currently recording. So let's say recording false in the beginning. Additionally, we wanna load some files. So let's keep them in stored file, uh, stored file names, because actually what we get back from the capacitor file system is usually uh, just a name. So let's do load files right in our on init. And within load files, we're gonna use I think we make this asynchronous and then we go ahead with the file system 
uh, read directory. And for the path, we will just use the root level. You could also have a path to like audio files, but I wanted to keep this simple today. Directory, we're gonna use the default or the standard directory for user generated data and that is data. And well, if I use a then block, I actually don't need to mark the function as async, but well, we got it now anyway. <laughs> okay, uh, what's interesting here is um, that this result, uh, can we lock this out? Um, only contains the names of the files. So that's gonna be a little challenge. Um, maybe I can already show you this on my device, let's see. Uh, because I created some voice before, might work. Let's give it a try if we're actually connected. There's some application. And there's our result. Well, the files array is empty. We'll come back to that <laughs> once we've recorded something. Okay, um, first step in the beginning, my recommendation is to use the voice recorder and ask for permissions. Well, let's import the voice recorder and then we have multiple ways so we can check if the device can uh, record voice or has uh, recording permissions but if you just trigger this request once uh, that should be enough to bring up the dialogue on iOS and Android to ask for user permissions of course if the user has denied you would have to somehow track this and then uh, implement to request permission at a later point again but for us that should be fine I assume we won't see this in my application as I've already granted permissions but on your first try uh, you should now see it in there now uh, if we have start recording we should also have stop recording in here and then we can already connect that with two buttons in our mighty view so we got start recording and stop recording. Great buttons, that looks epic. Okay, um, for start recording, we will actually only trigger this if we're not recording. Just a little uh, security mechanism. So only if not this start recording. No, actually if we're <laughs> recording, uh, we will just return. Makes life easier. Same here, stop recording. If we're not recording, well, there's no need to actually trigger that function. And now we can use the voice recorder in our start function, set recording to true, and then call a function to start recording. Actually, we don't need any parameters. We could listen to uh, the then block or the catch block, but it's actually not too interesting at this point simply because the actual result will be available once we stop recording. So let's do this in here, stop recording, and then we will get back some uh, result. Uh, actually, there's an interface for the result, which is called recording data, I think. So that will make our life a bit easier. We can see recording data contains value with the record data base 64, the duration and the mime type. Could be helpful, we won't really use those two. Uh, perhaps in your case, it might make sense to somehow use them. So let's check if we have a result uh, and result value. Why do I have so many security mechanisms in place today? That's really untypical for me. I would just assume we have the data at that point, but well. Okay, um, now we can grab the data and as I said, uh, as you can already see from the name, it's a base64 string. I still got that lock. I really need to change that somehow because I don't really like the UI of it. Now, uh, that's pretty good that we get back base64 data because uh, when we run to write to the capacitor file system and create a new file we actually need a string and therefore this is really the, the perfect behavior so let's just create a new file name from the current date and then use file system uh, dot write file I think yeah write file uh, we want to use for the path now the name and for the directory, the one we used before as well. Uh, what's it? Directory dot, nope. Cachettes, no. Nope. Data, please. And uh, actually the data might make sense. So the data is just the record data. 
And once we're done with this, I will just call load files again. Of course, to make this more performant, you would just add this to your local array, the name, and don't reload all the files, but I'm a bit lazy, and just like we did in the image guide lately we did, we will do it like this. So I think we should actually be able to see something. Let's give this a try. Okay, I'm starting. Hello, first test. Okay, that's good. That's a good result for now because we can see the base 64 data. Maybe we shouldn't lock this out all the time. Uh, and then also from our reload, we see that a new file with this name was created. So I would say we are now trying to display that file first of all and then somehow play it because those two things will be very, very easy. First of all, listing the files just like this, going over our stored files and then it will appear in a list. Uh, on top of that, we might want to make this a button and on click, we want to play the file. At this point, we only have the file name. So keep that in mind. This is not the actual file. Therefore, we need to resolve the information or uh, well, resolve. Well, we need to load the file. So let's do this. We load the audio file. Um, by using the capacitor file system plugin again and call read file. The path is the name of the file. The directory is the directory like before. Then we're gonna put in another lock because I really <laughs> discovered that for me again. And then we can go ahead and grab the base64 data from our file result. With that in place, you could now do obviously everything. You could also upload that file um, either as base64 data to your API, you could upload it to Superbase, Firebase, however you want. All of them should support uploading base64. Or you could also read the file as a blob from your system and then uh, transfer those bytes to your backend. Everything at this point would be possible. In our case, I simply took the snippet from the repository, uh, which looks like this, to easily convert this to a new audio element uh, with the right settings for base64, and then it will automatically play that file. So let's see if I can turn on my uh, iPhone. Uh, that's interesting. The voice is now coming from my headphones. That's totally not what I wanted. Um, uh, okay, I, I hope you heard that. That now came from my Mac. There was also completely not what I wanted um, because my Mac should be muted. But anyway, I think uh, you've now seen that it basically works, right? Um, I don't know. Maybe it works like this. I think you should be able to hear that. Okay, that means we have the basic recording in place after 11 minutes or 12 minutes with the introduction perhaps. Now, if you want to take things a step further, let's do something cool and that is making a button like in the WhatsApp application where you have to hold it down while recording. We won't do that slide up to a lock because well, that whole micro animation would be an completely uh, another tutorial, but we will definitely make it that you have to press and hold that button to record a message because that's not going to be too hard. Uh, first of all, we're now going to add the after view init here. Uh, the reason is simple. We want to ng after view init. We want to create a gesture. So let's add the gesture controller, gesture controller. And with that gesture controller, we're gonna implement a new long press gesture. The name doesn't actually matter too much, uh, but well, I had to go with some name. And before we do anything else, let me do this long press dot enable because I will definitely forget about it. Now to add this long press gesture, uh, we of course need a little element in our view. So let me bring in a little snippet for a footer. This one will be a footer with an ion row. 
we will either display a little spin, please uh, press and hold to record, or the duration uh, that we're already doing our recording. So let's set that to an empty string. And to correctly format that, we actually also need to have uh, a real number so we can then later calculate this. More important is now also the record button because that gets a template reference which we can then access. Uh, right now, okay, it's failing because of those lines. But otherwise, it should now look like this. Press and hold to record and we got the icon here. That means we can also get rid of the other icons to make the view look really good. Okay, uh, back to our long press gesture. Uh, we need to access the view child of our view now. Uh, what was the name? <laughs> Record button. <laughs> really, I'm really bad at memorizing those small little details while talking. Um, might might be an idea to get better with. Okay. Uh, this one will be our record button and we are not really interested in the actual ion button so if you would normally access something as a view child you will then use ion button in here but we really want just the, the plain element so we're gonna add read element reference in here and then we'll just have the plain native HTML element that's also now required uh, for our long press gesture. That's really the most important element. For gesture, you have to define uh, on which element this uh, gesture should actually work. Uh, on top of that, we need a few more things. We might set the threshold to zero so it starts immediately. Uh, we're gonna set the gesture name to really doesn't matter, long press. And then we are already good, but of course that's not going to be very interesting. More interesting is the onStart function. And of course, if we have onStart, we also want to define on end. Uh, you see, you could also now define on move for that gesture and then maybe track how the user is uh, sliding up the Y coordinate and then do something <laughs> again that will take like a complete uh, another tutorial. On start, I now want to use finally my Haptics plugin. Can I import this? Yes, nice. And I want to uh, do a little impact. We want to set the style to impact style dot. Let's do the light one, that should be enough. Imports coming correctly. And we're going to do this when we end as well. So that gives the user a nice little feedback uh, while pressing down uh, the button and on end the user will get another feedback. On end we will of course stop our recording and on start, guess what, this does start recording. Uh, this would be enough right now to have this press down, talk into the phone, record, release and then you got the recording. But we also want to track the uh, duration of that file. So let's add another function. Let's, well, let's do it right below to calculate the duration. Maybe we could also give this a different name. Uh, that will usually should work. And within calculate duration, we're going to check if we're not recording anymore. Uh, we're going to reset our duration to zero and we're going to reset the duration display to an empty string and well we can just return <laughs> I'll kind of like that pattern um, well uh, then I don't really need an else statement right when I do it like this now we can go ahead and set our recording duration where's my recording du okay I just use duration to um, plus one so we're just gonna count up the second and the trick is now to set a little timeout. That's how you basically create any kind of timeout with JavaScript. And then when the timeout after one second runs out, we're just gonna call the function again. Um, now, a bit more challenging was to displaying it like 0 0.15 seconds, because we're just gonna have a value from 0 to 100 or whatever. So therefore, we need to calculate both the minutes which we can do uh, by simply dividing our duration by 60 and rounding it. 
and we can get the seconds by using modulo. Um, and then I edit this, which transforms this part, which is a number to a string first of all, and then calls the pet start function, which adds the zero to make it always have a length of two. That was pretty cool. Actually, I, I think I never used that one before. And we can just set our duration display to this. Now let's see this in action. Okay, we got the application here. So let's give this a try. This is a test and it's not working. As we can see, there's still press and hold to record. I'm actually not sure why I talk into this. I need to talk into my phone. The reason is that our gesture might run, but there's a tiny difference here. And that is to set run inside angular zone to true. Only if we do this, it can correctly update our view and do all of those things within the angular change detection. So let's do it again. Another test and the time is running up. And then we should be able to. Test and the time that looks good. That looks good. Looks like we can display it. Uh, only looks like, looks like it's not stopping on end. Um, I feel like uh, if this, uh, I feel like I made a mistake somewhere. I guess I forgot to say this dot recording false or something like this. Uh, I think I never really stopped the recording. Probably that's test one, two, three. Uh, yeah, that is better. Okay, so we're now able to kind of mimic that behavior from WhatsApp. Let's do one final thing and that is to delete those files um, simply to clean up after us and because it's pretty easy. We just call the fail, the fail, <laughs> the fail system to delete a file uh, with a given file name so we can easily plug this into our HTML by adding another button within our item. Uh, at the end slot to delete a recording. And I think that should be enough. If you want to make this look better, also say detail false. Uh, quick learning here. Uh, on iOS, you usually get that arrow. If you say detail false, you don't have the arrow. Simple as that. And now I can remove all the recordings again. I can do another recording. My final and last recording for the day. And then we got everything in here. We can play it. You should be maybe able to hear it. Maybe not. I don't know. It's kind of bad with this. It should play just from here. Anyway, uh, I think this was really fast. I'm fascinated that we don't need any Android permissions for this. Um, but most likely asking for permissions right here is already enough for Android. Make sure you add the iOS P list key and then uh, you can really do anything. Remember, we get back base64 data from uh, this plugin, which you can either write to a file, directly upload to any cloud hosting or your backend, or you could create a file and then later upload that blob. Everything would be possible, and I think this is pretty amazing. All right, and that's it already again for this quick win. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I really uh, was impressed how easy we were able to implement the audio recorder with that plugin. If you need to record audio, maybe for something like a chat, like WhatsApp, uh, as we uh, well, as we all know, or in other scenarios where you want to submit maybe a ticket with an audio file, this plugin is really amazing. The output can be easily stored to a file using Capacitor. You can easily upload the Base64 or the file completely up to you. And that makes this plugin so versatile in a lot of situations. Again, if you want to check out the code, ionicacademy.com if you're not yet a member. And otherwise, make sure to give the video a like and subscribe for all the upcoming Ionic videos. I will hopefully catch you next week. So have a great week and happy coding, Simon. <laughs>